Over the past year, we've heard a lot about AI. And whether you like it or not, it's not going anywhere. Actually, AI has been a part of our lives as users for a long time, making repetitive and manual tasks automated from customer service to smart home devices. But the thing is that as it steps more into tasks that currently are a responsibility of creative and development roles, it's making us rethink how we design, code, and collaborate. My approach is to keep learning and incorporate it into my workflow. In this video, I'll share the stages in which I use AI in my design process, leveraging where it really shines and how I use it. And make sure to stick around until the end, because I'll be sharing my favorite resources for learning about AI so you can boost your knowledge base and enhance your design workflow. All right, so when is AI going to be helpful for us product designers? When we talk about AI in design, that can be applied to structuring information in the form of text or visuals. For my tests, I see that when it comes to visuals, it has quite some ground to cover still. I know there are some really cool image generators, even inside Photoshop and Canva, but I didn't see something as powerful for product design yet. I believe the technology is going to get there one day, but currently I use AI more when it comes to text. All right, so let's think about the design process and see where AI is going to participate. Let's take the design thinking framework as a starter because it's usually the outline that I use for any project. I'm just going to make alterations depending on the project. So we have empathize, define, ideate, prototype, and test. Out of five, I use AI in at least three of these stages. During empathize, what I like to do is to use it to come up with survey and interview questions for when I reach out to users. Then, once I have a clear picture of my problem and my user persona, during ideation, it's also great for you to use AI to confront the solutions that you came up with, identifying potential flaws and also making sure that your user flow is very straightforward and clear. And the third stage where I usually use AI is during prototyping for the copy. Those days where you can simply put some Lorraine Ipsum are gone. So it's very nice to ask AI to generate some compelling, short and clear messages for you. And now that you know the stages in which I use AI, let me tell you my go-to tools. Well, so during research and ideation, I like to use the old and famous ChatGPT. Not to do the research for me because we know that ChatGPT is very good at putting one word after the other, but not so good at fact-checking. For research and ideation, with the same purposes that I mentioned before, another tool that I like to use is FigJam. The board counts with some AI features, which is very helpful to either interpret the data, summarize it, or just organize the mess that is often present in the design process. When we talk about copy, I did start asking ChatGPT to help me out with that as well. But since late last year, I started using Magician, which is a AI powered plugin that generates text, icons, and images. I'm usually not very satisfied with what it produces when it comes to visuals. So I just stick to copy and it does a pretty decent job. And the third tool that I like to use is Jasper for documentation. Again, you can use ChatGPT for that, but Jasper has a bunch of templates that you can use. So you don't have to write down this huge prompt out of the gates. And now let's talk about learning resources so you can be ahead of your game. The first one is Elements of AI, a free two-part course that gives you an introduction on what AI is and how it's built. The second part is a little bit more technical, so you may need to be a little familiar with Python. And the second resource is ChatGPT Prompt Engineering for Developers. This course was made with OpenAI, and it gives you an overview on what prompt engineering is and also its best practices. I watched the course last year, and although I'm not developing, it was very helpful for me to understand more about prompt engineering and also for me to come up with better prompts. Because currently, for you to get the best out of AI, you need to be assertive when you're prompting. And this is how I use AI to supercharge my work flow in UXY design. If you found this video helpful, you definitely want to check out this one where I talk more about my design process and how I tailor it to each project. And now that you know more about AI, you can definitely apply that to your design process. Before you go, make sure to hit the like button and also to subscribe if you're new here so you don't miss any of the upcoming videos. I'll see you in the next one. Happy designing!